Hello everybody and welcome to our class video about the surface area and volume of pyramids. Our learning goal is that you will be able to calculate the surface area and volume of pyramids. Gosh! Imagine that. Okay, so let's start off with the surface area. Okay, I've provided four different views of the same pyramid for this part, just to help you visualize what's going on. Okay, <coughs> so let's find the surface area of a pyramid that has a square base with sides of 8 inches and a height of 6 inches. We'll start with our first method, which is to add the areas of all the faces. So we'll be looking at the net for the pyramid. Okay, we'll need to find the area of the square base and also, okay, which is right there, and also the area of the triangles that form the sides of the pyramid, which you can see are right there. All right, so let me make it, the picture a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, so the finding the area of the square base is quite easy. Okay, the sides of the base are 8 and 8, and you guys could easily tell me that the area of that square is 64. Okay, so that was the simple part. Now comes the task of finding the areas of the four triangles. But what's the height of those triangles? And I'll give you a hint, it's not 6. 6 is the height of the pyramid, but it is not the height of the triangles that form the sides of the pyramid. That would be located there. See where I drew the green line? Okay, that is known as the slant height, which we use the letter L to symbolize that because the, it's the height on a lateral face. That's where the letter L comes from. Okay, and that is very different. Okay, oh yeah, I drew it down there. Okay, there's L on the other picture. That's very different from the letter H, which is the height that is straight up and down above the base. Okay, so we got two kinds of height, the slant height and the regular height. Okay, to help you see the difference between these two, I've prepared a little demonstration with some 3D models that can help you understand it. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to that. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Henning. And I want to take just a little bit of time to show you guys some 3D models of pyramids to help you understand the concepts better. Okay, so first, let's take a look at that yellow one right there. It folds out into a net. Okay, so I can fold it out to make a net like that, which you guys can see in the notes. Okay, so I want to help you visualize where that slant height is. Okay, so let me put it back up again. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line down the middle of one of the triangles that would be the slant height. Okay, so you guys see that? Alright, so that's the slant height. You can see that it's drawn on one of the sides of the pyramid. When I fold it out into the net, you can see that that slant height is on one of the triangles. Okay, see like this. So, that'll help you visualize that that line going down one of the triangles is not actually the height of the pyramid, but the slant height going down one of the sides. Okay, let's look at another model. Okay, so I've got this one here. Okay, now this one has got a movable string so that you can see the difference between the height and the slant height. Okay, so right now I have the string as the height of the pyramid. I can move it over here to be the slant height. So see it's going down one of the sides of the triangles. Okay, so we've got height, which is H, slant height, which is L. Height, slant height, height, slant height. Okay, kind of see the difference? 
Okay. Note also that the slant height is different than going down one of the edges of the pyramid. Okay, that's an edge, not the slant height. Okay, we're going down the middle of one of the triangles. Okay, to help you visualize the right triangle that's inside, let's look at this model. All right, so you can see that red tri right triangle inside, okay, where we've got the height is the vertical part, then we have the part here, then we have the slant height going down one of the sides. All right? So that's the triangle that we'll use to help find the slant height. All right, hope that helps you guys. I will see you later. Back to the other video. Okay, we're back. So, now that you know the difference between the regular height H and the slant height L, how are we going to find the slant height? Because it's the L that I need in order to find the areas of the triangles that are around the outside of the pyramid. Okay, so you see the right triangle that is down in the pictures at the bottom? Because it's a right triangle, we could use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find the length of L. You guys could easily tell me that the height of that right triangle is 6. Okay. Now, what about that bottom side? Okay. On the square, if I looked at the square, the base of the pyramid from its bottom, from below the pyramid, it would look like this. You guys can probably easily tell me that that length of the brown segment is 4 because it's half of the 8. But what are we going to call it on the bottom there? Well, notice that that brown segment goes from the center of the square to the middle of one of the sides. Do you remember the term for that? Oh, well, yes. That's the apothem. So the square is a regular polygon, is it not? So we'll label that side A because it's the apothem. This would correspond also if, say, the base was a pentagon for a pentagonal pyramid, we would also find the value, the length of the apothem, and that would form the base of the right triangle. Okay, so now let's actually go ahead and find the length of the slant height. So I'll use Pythagorean theorem for the right triangle, which would turn into a squared plus h squared equals l squared in this case. So that would be 4 squared plus 6 squared equals l squared. 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36, and adding those together I get 52. Taking the square root of both sides, that would tell me that the length of the slant height L is 7.21. So I'll mark that on my diagram. Okay, everybody see how we got that? Typically, if you know either H or L and you want to find the other, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now that we know that, let's actually find the areas of the faces. Formula for area of a triangle is one half base times height. So that would be one half of the base being eight and the height being 7.21. Notice that height is actually L, the slant height. The regular H height of the triangle is the L slant height of the pyramid. Confusing enough? Okay, so if I plug that in, I'll get 28.84 as the area of one of the triangles. Okay, so to find the lateral area of the pyramid, which being just around the sides, would be the areas of the four triangles combined, but not including the base. So I'll do four times the area of one of the triangles. That gives me 115.36 square inches. The total surface area I just have to take that and add the area of the square, which is the base. Adding 64, I would get 179.36 inches squared. Okay? Now, sometimes it's more convenient to have this set up as a formula. So, let's do that as well. So, to find the formula for the lateral area, let's generalize what we did on the net. So, to find the lateral area, I did four times the area of one triangle. The area of the triangle is one-half base times height. The, 
and the base of the triangle was S, and the height of the triangle was L. So that would be 4 times 1 half SL. But what's 4? Well, 4 is just the number of sides of the base. That's where we get the four triangles. So I'll replace it with N for the number of sides. And what, after all, is N times S? The number of sides times the length of one side is just the perimeter. So this will change into 1 half PL. That's the formula in general for the lateral area of a pyramid. 1 half times the perimeter of the base times the slant height. For the surface area, in total, I just need to add the area of one base. So I'll do plus B at the end of the formula. That's different from a prism, because in a prism you add 2B, because there are two bases. Okay, let's do it with the actual numbers that we had. That'd be 1 half times 32, which is the perimeter of the base, times the slant height, which is 7.21. That gives me 115.36, just what we got before. For the total surface area, I just need to add 64 at the end. And that gives me 179.36. Again, that's the same answer we had before. All make sense? Let's do volume really quick as well. The formula for volume of a pyramid is one-third times the area of the base times the height. Notice this is the H, not the L in this case. This formula, I, you know, while I could show you where it comes from, it actually involves some calculus concepts. So I'm not going to go there for this right now. Okay? So to apply it for this pyramid, the area of the base is there, and the height being straight up and down is there, which is 6. So we have 1 third times 64 inches squared times 6 inches. Multiplying the numbers gives me 128, and the units would be inches cubed, because we have inches squared times inches. All right, there's the volume. Now how does this compare with the prism? The volume for a prism was just area of the base times height. See the difference? The pyramid is just one-third that amount. So this is an important conclusion. The volume of a pyramid is one-third the volume of a prism with the same base and the same height. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So if you know how to find the volume of a prism, you can get the volume of a pyramid pretty easy. Just divide by three. Alright, so that's all folks. I'll see you guys in class.